Hello. Today we're here to review some of the 2021 Wave 2 release changes for Dynamics 365 Business Central. My name is Leanne Virtus and I am joined today by my colleague Stacy Can, and we are business solutions consultants with the Corporate Renaissance Group. Just a little bit about our, our company. Uh, Corporate Renaissance Group was established in 1989, so we've been around the Microsoft business world for just over 30 years. We have about 4,000 clients worldwide and our offices span from Canada to the US, the Caribbean, South Africa, UK and India. So let's get into some of the features that are coming with this new wave release, which I think clients are, are really going to um, get full advantage of. Starting with the account schedules budget filter. Uh, many of our clients have been asking for this one, and now you can add a budget filter to your account schedules in the column layout and setup. Uh, comparing actuals to budget and forecast is now going to be much easier. Defaulting the document line to save time and entry on data entry. Again, this is another item that was kind of frustrating for some clients, um, not being able to change that default line. So now you can change up the default line on purchase and sales documents. In previous versions, it was defaulted to item. Now you can make a default preference of your choice, which makes sense for your business. Simply go to the sales or purchases setup page and select your default type line. Business Central and Teams. Our clients love the integration to Excel from Business Central and Microsoft continues to integrate its suite of products. Now there is a BC app for Teams and a Share to Teams button right inside Business Central's new Share button. With this ability, you will be able to share information with your colleagues and a link back to Business Central. For clients that conduct business in foreign currency, Microsoft is making it even better to track and calculate foreign exchange adjustments. Users now will have the ability to filter based on customer, vendor, bank accounts, or a combination of the above to, when making their adjustments. Microsoft brings users a desktop app for Business Central. This allows users flexibility to choose how they want to launch Business Central. Some of the benefits of moving to the desktop app is launch Business Central when you start your computer. Better performance. The app is faster, smoother to render on screen. The app opens in its own window, independent of other browser windows. And now you can install a separate app for each environment that you may have. Posting error messages in Business Central are oftentimes challenging to decipher. Microsoft has made improvements to the information about the error message. More details such as what is missing as part of a posting group setup or dimension combination that are not permitted on a transaction will be displayed, making it easier for users to make the necessary corrections and be able to oppose their entry. Personalize, the feature that all users love and document attachment are being improved with this new wave release. The document attachment from a mobile device will be improved so that you'll be able to attach and view attachments much more easily. This is helpful for users that are on the go. The personalized feature, which we have all come to love in Business Central, just got better. Traditionally, if there was a field you required that wasn't visible under Personalize, it required going into Designer, create an extension, and bring it into the environment as a global change. Now Microsoft is adding more columns and fields to choose from on multiple different pages throughout Business Central, allowing the user experience to be that much better. And I'll turn things over to my colleague, Stacy now. Thank you, Leanne. So continuing with the application features, reconciliations, including bank and payment reconciliations, are key processes for all businesses. They ensure the accuracy and validity of financial information. In this release, Microsoft has made it more efficient to use the payment reconciliation journal by creating a separate number series. This enables you to easily identify where a posting originates when you are looking at historical information. They have also included a posting preview. This is quite useful as you can check data you are about to post prior to posting 
to ensure that entries are recording to the correct general ledger accounts. You also now have the ability to reverse the general ledger posted through Payment Reconciliation Journal. This enables you to correct errors easier and faster. On the bank reconciliation, the page has been enhanced so that the bank ledger entries are now filtered and only ledger entries after the statement's ending date are displayed. This makes it easier for you to select and review. The test spot is now easier to read and review as the report will use the statement date as a filter for the GL account and bank account so that it puts an emphasis on the period you are reconciling. When it comes to matching, previously, if you did an auto match and then a manual match, and had to go back to do an auto match again, it would have removed all of the matches that were previously done. Now, there is no overriding of previously matched items as the user can decide to not override any of the already matched entries. There is also now a smart matching feature where the system you provide where the, sorry, where the system provides you with suggestions of multiples to apply to or to make up that one lump sum based on the amount within the reconciliation time frame. This will save time when you are trying to reconcile many small multiples to one lump sum. And when you transfer differences to be posted in the general ledger, the entries will be auto-matched when you return to the bank reconciliation, thereby reducing that manual step. There is now a new home for opening Excel and editing Excel. Previously, the open and editing Excel actions would have been found in the menu page. Now, the 2021 release wave two introduces the share icon and menu where users will find open in Excel and edit in Excel actions. This applies to list pages, such as the items list, and to list parts that display a full menu, such as the lines part on a sales order. The edit in Excel feature is frequently used by businesses to bulk edit data, and now the feature has been extended even further. It has been added to the recurring general journals and intercompany general journal pages. This feature can help speed up data entry. There's also been some other enhancements made to Excel. Users can now export report data to Excel from the report request page in the raw data format and not in the report layout. The exported file name has been simplified to match the name of the page, and error messages are more detailed to help troubleshoot issues faster. New templates and configuration templates. The personalization tool lets users tailor the information that pages contain by dragging fields or columns from a list to the page. For example, you can use personalization on the customer template to add a credit limit field to the template. Click on select more to select one or more customers and then use the apply template action to apply the customer template. The customers selected would now be updated to reflect the credit limit entered on the customer template. Previously, when you were working with requisition and planning worksheets, you were only able to add inventory items. If you tried to add a non-inventory item, you would have received an error. Now, you have the ability to add non-inventory items and services. This update was made as some companies use requisition and planning worksheets to enter items they want to order and then create purchase orders for those items all in one go. This gives the business a unified procurement process for both inventoryable and non-inventoryable items. Also, 
you can now specify a location for non-inventory items in supported transactions. This is useful for reporting purposes and cases, and when there is one document, such as a purchase order, with multiple non-inventory items meant for different locations. The feature, however, does not support warehouse operations for service and non-inventory items. Item variants are a great way to keep items under control, especially if you have a large number of items that are almost identical and vary, for example, only in color. Rather than setting up each variant as a separate item, you can set up one item and then specify various colors as variants of that item. Previously, item variants were only included on production orders. Now, you can register anticipated demand, not only with respect to locations and dates, but with item variants as well. If you search for demand forecast, you will find demand forecast entries results. The variant code field has been added to the demand forecast entries page and entries can be created directly. The only setup required for using item variants in demand forecasting is that you turn on the use forecast by variant toggle on the manufacturing setup page. Alternative units of measures can now be used for items with serial number tracking. To do this, you first need to create an item tracking code and enable both the serial number specific tracking and the serial number warehouse specific tracking. After, you create a new item and assign the item tracking code to it. Then, you create an alternative unit of measure for the item. The purchase order is then created and released for the location that requires putaway, and then the inventory putaway is created. Business Central creates inventory putaways and automatically splits the line from the purchase order into multiple lines so that a warehouse employee can enter numbers for the items and also splits source documents when creating the pick. In the new wave, these capabilities are now available for alternative units of measures. You can also specify a rounding precision for base units of measure to guide users on what to enter for a given business process and reduce rounding issues when using alternate units of measure. The base unit of measure for the item defines how you store it and the alternate units of measure define how you handle it in purchase, production, or sales documents. For example, you may buy the item in boxes and you only use single pieces in production. The quantity rounding precision field lets you specify the conversion value as a whole number. So that's a preview of some of the new features released by Microsoft in the 2021 release wave two. If you have any questions or would like to learn more about Dynamics 365 Business Central, please feel free to contact us at crg at crgroup.com for a demo. Our experts are here to help you. Thank you for watching the video and we look forward to hearing from you. Have a great day.